My drawings and my tattoos were separated so much back then. Like what I would enjoy drawing looked nothing like what I tattooed. And I felt like that was, I was doing myself an injustice then. Yeah, you know? it was like a bit of a riff between yeah. what you wanted and what, right, okay. One felt like work, one felt like fun. If you could look at that tattoo and make up some story about it, man, you've got a good tattoo there, you know? 100%. Like that's that's it. Like if, it's, if it looks like it has a backstory, it's decent. You hit that point in your life. Yeah, and you had to watch, just has reflect, that. yeah? Yeah, I had to reflect, because I had kind of, at the time I felt like I'd lost everything. You know, I was going for a lot at that point, but that was my rock bottom. Now I feel like some people need to hit rock bottom to realize, you know, to build them back up, but in the Absolutely. right way. And I did, and I feel like I'm in a much better place now than I was, and that's not due to anyone, it's due to myself and mm. how I dealt with my life at the time. Hello and welcome back to the podcast. I'm Alex Lloyd and this is a 21st century tattoo. Jason, how you yeah, doing, man? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm not too uh, bad yeah. at all. That's sick. <laughs> um, let's get fucking straight into this. Thank Fuck you, it, man. Thank you for having us down. No um, worries. Right, I've written a little bit about you here. Obviously, you, you're a self-professed tattoo artist and illustrator. 18 years deep. And you are like you are producing this like ultra clean. It's like dark, illustrative style, I guess. Um, I love it, man. I think it's it sick. Appreciate it, man. I guess I want to know, as with all the guests, like, yeah, just kind of take me back to where it where it started, really, and and kind of maybe, like, yeah, what got you here yeah. now? Oh, right, man. Shit, we're going back a while. We're going back a while. All right, so, so I remember when I was a kid. When I say kid, I was, like, probably 17, late 17, just about to turn 18. I'm just smoking all the weed, drinking all the booze, and stealing coins out of my mum and dad's little fucking pot they got in their room yeah and my mum was like you need a damn job all right like a couple of weeks later she's i don't know why she was in croydon because we live in bromley but anyway she's in croydon she's the studio looking for apprentice she's gonna go and try there i got it on portfolio i brick it i don't do it yeah um i come home tell my mum i did do it but i didn't get it and then realized that i'm a prick so uh, can I swear, by the way? Yeah, so, yeah, it's yeah, it's come, it's come, it's come. Uh, uh, so yeah, then I went back up and I got it like straight away. It was all good. Like the guy was in there. His name's Cali. There's like biomech and stuff. Sick guy. Yeah. Uh, just see like uh, my work back then was like, how do I explain? It's like um, if you mixed the artist who did, remember Metal Gear Solid? Yeah. You remember the artwork from that with Where's Wally? Yeah, quite like, like, <laughs> oh man, it's okay. Yeah, so fine. It was like over the top detail. But like action detail, you know, like it was just, oh man, I have to show you some at some point, man. Yeah. But, um, so yeah, for his aesthetic as a tattooist, I think he saw my work and thought, you know, maybe I can get something out of this guy, like he mm. could work, you know. And this is this is 18 years ago, man. This is when people made money out of little devils on the shoulders. Yeah, like yeah, dolphins, yeah. Dolphins, yeah. you know, little things. It makes me feel old as shit, but I managed to start early. So yeah, that was, that's where it started. This, I want to, and I will, I want to ask you about this later is yeah. like how much that the industry's progressed, you know, in that amount of time. Mad, man. Do you know what I mean? And to see yeah. it like, that's a, that's a long time to be doing it, you know, it shows in your work. So, but yeah, let's, we can get onto that later. Okay, that's cool. Man. Yeah, sick. Yeah, it's really cool. Man. It's, it's good. It's good. Just good to sit down with you. Um, what I want to know, because your stuff is very unique, like where are you drawing your inspiration from? Like, do you look at any artist in particular or is this just like, I know you're very creative, you know, doing this, got a lot of digital art and stuff. Like, yeah. is it just, is it all from the mind? It's, it's hard, man. Like, I think having the amount of time I've had tattooing and drawing, I've, how do I explain it? Over the last, like, I'd say four or five years, I think I've, mentally disassociated myself with tattooing mm. up until then maybe a little bit longer than five years ago but up until then everything I drew was a tattoo yeah. like I'd draw for a tattoo and that'd be it like I want to draw something okay well how would it fit on an arm you know so I'm yeah. drawing it to you know everything had a tattoo as the end goal that was my mindset now that's gone I, I, I'll, I'll fit it in. If someone wants to say on the arm, yeah, I'm fitting in on the stencils mm. and stuff to, you know, or on a picture of an arm. But the, I, the ideas I've got in my head, I'm trying to purposely not to think about drawing a tattoo because my drawings and my tattoos were separated so much back then. Like what I would 
enjoy drawing look nothing like what I tell you and I felt like that was, I was doing myself an injustice then yeah you know? it was like a bit of a riff between yeah. what you wanted and what right okay one felt like work one felt like fun you know even though I was enjoying tattooing don't get me wrong I enjoyed what I was doing in the art side of things and whenever it was I was drawing for tattoos it was what I expected people to buy or want so that, that was the mindset. Whereas where I was drawing for a hobby, yeah. I was just like, what the fuck do I want to draw, man? Shit. Like, oh, I want to draw some fucking skulls with diamonds coming out of his eyes and stuff. So yeah. what, you know? But if you look at my work, like, I'll say a bit longer, maybe about seven or eight years ago, it's full colour. You're a stereotypical neo-trad. Yeah. Like, and I barely do any colour now, mm. you know? So, and that's because I feel like I've, I don't want to sound like a cocky dick, but I feel like I've got to a point now where you know, they're, they're kind of reaching a level where they're similar. You know, there's obviously some things in the illustrations I can't do as tattoos and the same vice versa. And I'm not going to start stipple shading my illust illustrations and I'm not going to start fine lining the shit out of everything in my tattoos. But if you put them together, I like to feel like you could sort of tell they're the same artist, you know? Yeah, and I think you can. Yeah, I think I'm getting there. I, I, I don't feel like... I, it's, it's a goal that I'm not going to achieve. Yeah. But, you know, as long as I'm like happy with where it's at I'm cool with that like yeah. I, you know and I think like I'm sure many of the other people have been on this have said like you can't I think the day that you feel like <laughs> you're good enough yeah that's you, it you're done yeah you, you sure. may as well quit like it's, that's not the mentality no, you yeah. can't have that mentality you've always got to improve and where I'm you know I'm, I'm adapting I'm learning in my illustrating it's brilliant because I'll see something I'll do in illustrating and I'll put it, and then it makes me want to add to that in the tattoo. Mm. You know, so like, whereas I might not be able to do that specific thing in the drawing. Okay, well, how can I find a technique that works as a tattoo to then add this sort of thing in the tattoo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Where was, obviously you said when you're starting out, like, and only recently, like you've really kind of combined the two of what yeah. you wanted, what you wanted to do, and drawing for those pieces. Like, why were you keeping them separate, and why weren't? Do you know what I mean? And then when, where was that decision to be like, nah, actually, I'm gonna? Or was it a real kind of gradual thing? I think it was gradual. I don't think there was a certain point I sat there and thought, oh, I've got to start like right merging these now. But I think, I think um, a lot of it was time. Like, the majority, of the beginning of my career, like the, I'd, I'd say the apprenticeship I had wasn't great in the fact that it was more about the money than yeah. about the art then. I mean, it was not just the apprenticeship. I'm not going to blame everyone else. It was me as well, man. I didn't give a shit. Like, I was making money. I was enjoying myself. Yeah. I was having a good time. You know, I was young and, like, it's a good job to have, especially back then. And, um, and yeah, it was just over time. I think when I moved studios from the place I and the people I did my apprenticeship with to a place that, obviously uh, had a lot more of a passion for art. Mm. I think one guy even said to me once, oh, your work's kind of Neo-Trad. I went, what's Neo-Trad? I was like, what is this? Really? Yeah, and this was like, this is way, my work completely different back then to what it is now. And he said to me, oh yeah, work's kind of Neo-Trad. I started looking online. I was like, damn, man, all these artists, like Emily Rose Murray, uh, Justin Hartman, and all these like sick artists that this uh, like nine, eight, nine years ago. Yeah. And, um, and that, that kind of influenced it all. But so, yeah, my art progressed, my tattooing progressed, but it always come from like an area of money making, mm. you know? So it was like there was two me's, you know, two different artists. Yeah. Whereas what I'd do at home for fun was, would look completely different. And then what I did in the tattoo studio, again, would look different. And then, But then, you know, eventually the stuff I was doing at home, because I always had tattoos in mind, I kind of, I missed drawing in the way I enjoyed. So I kind of forced myself to do that. And that made that hard. And mm. yeah, it was different. But yeah, over time, it started doing this. And it would, it would have like areas where like, for example, how I'm tattooing now stemmed from more or less one piece. It was, mm. a, it was a knife facing, like the lady facing it, yeah? Yeah. So I did one of them and that was it snowball. But because Do you know, I, I think I remember seeing it. Yeah, well, I mean, at the beginning, I was doing, like, after that one, it got ripped off so much, I started doing them every two weeks. I had people fly over from the States to get them done and it was mad. It was, and that's what... How long ago are we talking here? This was about... Four or five years? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So... 
I, you did see it, but this is it, isn't it? Like someone does something, then that's all you get asked for, that's it, or that's man. all that someone copies, and you see it happen time and time yeah. again. Um, and I mean, it, it shows was, that it was. You know, uh, it was yeah, what's well, it? Well, the thing is that it weren't new. That like, I'd seen that done before. Mm. I'm not like that wasn't original Jason coming out with some ideas. <laughs> like, yeah, I'd seen, but I think uh, I can't remember her name. Uh, this is artist I saw. She'd done one before, and uh, and it wasn't even my idea. Uh, yeah, she works as well. She um. She wanted the tattoo and she said, oh, how, do, how about we do the, the hilt or like the, the handle, the blade a bit loose? Mm. So, yeah, that sounds sick. We draw that. Yeah. You know, yeah, and, then, yeah. and then I do the tattoo and all of a sudden I'm like, yeah, this is my idea. This, yeah, this, this is some is... followers now. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's sick. No, man, you've like, you've, you've smashed it. You know, do you know what I mean? And, and, and you're continuing. You're obviously such a humble bloke. And having that attitude to just always like strive to improve, you know, yeah. is like it's 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 good to see for sure. Because I, I, yeah, that's the sort of attitude that that I think people need to have in the industry. I think you it's know? easy to lose. One hundred percent. Yeah, you can see how you could lose it. You know. Yeah. I'm also really interested in your design process. Like, okay. I want to know now, I guess, are you kind of, have you wound it down with tattooing? I know you're a family man, you've got two kids. Yeah. Um, are you kind of tattooing a little bit less now? How do you kind of pick your projects and how do you kind of put these pieces together and, and book them, you know? Well, so I've got a million hobbies, man. Like we was talking about that hyper fixated on shit earlier. Yeah. yeah. So like I've got so many hobbies and the time I spend with my kids, I want it to be the time I spend with my kids. And I have them every other week. Mm. So at the moment, well, my, my short-term goal is to just be tattooing when I don't have them. And then when I do have them, I'll do my illustrating while they're at work. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, otherwise... Because at the moment, I'm doing like half days while they're at school and I'm doing 10 to 2, but then you've got to cut off at 2. So if someone's travelling down and you've got half hour left, I'm leaving at 2. Like, I've got to get them from school. Yeah. So it's difficult. And I'd rather just have two weeks a month focused on tattooing and then two weeks a month, I can get that illustrated. Oh, nice. Okay. So I'm trying to like it's like two on, two off. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to get there. Like I'm, I'm privileged in a in a good position where I own the studio, so I, you know, I can do that. Um, and then I can maybe find someone to take the time while I'm gone. But yeah, it's it's uh, it's a lot to juggle. But I think once you get you know everything in line, mm. it starts working out. Yeah, for sure. You make it work, innit? it? Yeah. Um, I've completely forgot what you asked me now. No, just thought, <laughs> design design process. Oh, the design, pro yeah. Okay, so design process uh, for a tattoo. Mm. So probably the same as yours, man. Mm. Like, you know, I just whip out the iPad, I start sketching. Like, yeah. that's it. Like, I'm, I, I always start, I can't remember putting them out. Um, someone put out these, like, uh, they're like body shape you know, as a brush on Procreate. Oh, yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, like the models, 3D models. No, they weren't models. It, it was like certain body parts you could overlay your designs on. It was like a stencil two. of a body part. Oh, okay. And you put them as like on one layer and you draw over yeah, that yeah, layer. Yeah. Man, they're sick. Mm. And I, I've been using them. So I literally, I get the cust so I'll get the customer to send me um, a, try and get a flat on picture of the area I want towed. Mm -hmm. So I don't give a shit what, it is could be the back of their like their Achilles heel. Or I something. want to see it. I want a flat on yeah photo. Get someone else to take well it. Well lit. That's mm. it. People yeah. taking it like this in the mirror. That's it. Is that good? Why enough? just get someone to take like it? Like their neck over there. Yeah, the mirror, like getting <laughs> half their ear in and shit. In the like, mirror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, I'm supposed to draw on that. No, the whole point of it is so I can draw on the picture. Mm. I want to put the stencil that I've got that kind of body map over a picture of you, and then I'll draw it on. Yeah. I mean, it's never gonna be perfect because a lot like um when you start getting customers like most of my customers will come out of the area so getting them to come down for a five minute consultation because i'm not i'm not standing there chatting for long like if you're coming for consultation i'm looking at you going yeah they're cool i'll see you in a couple of weeks but they've like, come like they've <laughs> yeah. got on the train all the way from yeah, scotland yeah, or something it. yeah of course like, no yeah. I'd send me everything i've got a little automated email so once the email goes to them they send me everything i need the flat on picture um Give me a rough size. I even try and get them to if if they've got a specific size of mine, draw on that, mm. mark it out. That's I'll do exactly the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it, it just makes life easy. And then I just sit down sketching. You know, I have my reference up. Like I'll smash out a load of pin. I think I've nearly completed Pinterest. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so I've, got, I've got so many folders, just stuff saved, just ideas. And then yeah, sometimes to speed up because tattooing's an everyday thing. I will stencil stuff. I'm not gonna lie. Like uh, now and again, if I need, if I'm struggling on a face, I'll get a cool face line. I will like do. I'll get like a quite a wired brush out and procreate, and I'll like 
do a rough paint over that because mm. I don't want it to look like the picture. I want it to have its own thing still. Yeah, and it will anyway yeah. by the way you're kind of putting that together. I think, I think it, that like, comes through for sure. If you, if you like... If I had just took the picture, you know, desaturated it and put the contrast up and then just towed from that, it's going to look like the picture. And mm. I get that if you're doing realism and stuff completely. But I think when, you're, when your stuff's more stylized, a bit more illustrative, more lines and stuff like that, you don't really, you want it to look not like that. Because otherwise, then you've wasted one picture. Mm. Like if you just did a quick brush over, like, so you've got, all I really want is the areas that I know is, eyes, nose, and mouth is, and I want it to look serious. Sometimes when I'm drawing from scratch, not only does it take me a, like four times as long, mm. but yeah, I'll be drawing, 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 and then lips will just be there and I'll be liquefying the shit out Yeah, of and if you're not quite like, you know, like we all have kind of days where, you know, not fully, crew, not feeling fully creative yeah. or whatever. And you, yeah, it makes total sense yeah, to do that. Yeah, why not? Like uh, some people like, I don't know why some artists act like they never do it. Like, well, so what, man? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a job, it's a day thing. You, you know, you can still enjoy the process, but it's like having a... It's like laying a laying a foundation, and then once and then get rid of the photo. Once you've got the bits in place, you've mm. marked out where the nose, eyes, and mouth are. Yeah. In an area that's serious enough to look decent as a tattoo, just get rid of the photo, and then the rest you can make up. Yeah. You know, then I then I might move the photo off to the side, and then I'll draw. I'll use like, I'll just use it as reference for the shadows and the lighting. But then like a lot of the time, I like to add like really harsh lighting in mm. sometimes, like a really flat shadow. Yeah. So yeah, just, what are your it's the the stuff's got a real kind of moody look to it. Yeah. But it's like, do you know what I want to ask you about? Is it the float they're like floating buildings? The floating towers and stuff. Where yeah. where does that come from? Because oh, that is know. sick. It's yeah, really, no, I appreciate that, but that, that really was really cool. I think that's probably um did I it was either the knife or it was one of those that I yeah. kind of saw and I was like, Yeah, this guy's no, the knight's helmets. You did like a Yeah, 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 yeah. But they've they got like the floaty rock underneath. Yeah. yeah, man. I don't know. I feel like I love ruins man I'm always taking my kids to see like some old ruins and shit like I love walking around there like I got like that's a cliche as shit man but I, I love the feels things give me yeah so mm. if I'm like draw, if I'm listening to music while I'm tearing or or if I'm listening to music while I'm drawing if I'm drawing something has to make me feel something yeah like I want to feel like inspired yeah yeah but not just inspired man I want to feel like and like when I watch like, like like things like fucking Game of Thrones, yeah, and you get those like, yeah, man, like well into the fantasy stuff, but you get that feeling of like how it was back then. Mm. It could be any program, fucking Breaking Bad, whatever. But you want to feel like you're part of that moment. So I, I like going to explore these places. I like the idea that once, you know, some dude was fucking stabbed in the face here or some shit, or like there was some bad, yeah. you know, portrayals going on. So I wanted to incorporate that in tattoos. I wanted to do like some ruins and stuff, but then... What do you do with the bottom? You just leave it flat. You draw some glass and the fuck, like fade it out. Mm. Nah, man, let's, let's put it on a floated rock. It's yeah. in space, man. We've got some astral castles going on yeah. here, you know? And it's, it just makes it's... it a bit more, you know, I feel like a, I've got a bit of a storyteller in me, man. Mate, 100. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I've seen, I've seen that through your work, you know. You kind of do tell stories through it. They're yeah. not just pieces, you know. They're these cost, it's custom work that tells a story. I feel like that's, I, I think that's, that's it. If you can, I think that's one good, it, that's a good thing about a piece of art or a toe, man. If you could look at that tattoo and make up some story about it, man, you've got a good tattoo there, you know? 100%. Like, that's that's it. Like, if it's if it looks like it has a backstory, it's decent, you that's know? <laughs> that is it. Yeah, man, it's sick. I'll tell you what, talking about, like, um, sort of artwork, looking at this collaboration that you recently did for Netflix, Stranger Things. Oh, yeah, man. Tell me a little bit about how that came to be. So I have a friend... Um, he owns a company called The Zeros in um, Hackney. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, his name's Scott Ham and he's a killer guy. And I see him, he started this a while ago, but I never understood what it was they were doing. I saw them working for a lot of brands and I saw they did something for Stranger Things maybe a couple of seasons ago. And yeah. It was like Mentos and like maybe some other like foodie brands sort of stuff. And I was mm. like, I was messaging him and said, man, what do you do? Like, I don't get it. Like, I see all this stuff come up, but is it you doing it? Like... And he told me uh, what it is they did and said, and it was just after I drew, I don't think I've not got it up in here, but I did like this skull with vines all around it. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It was like an illustration. And he said, um, oh, it's a shame we got in touch now because something like that would have been perfect for this project we had for Netflix. Mm. And I was like, oh, fuck, man, I missed out. Like, what are you going to do, man? Like, that's my, I didn't know any different. Yeah. Right? Um, and this was six months later. So he 
he said, look, send me some stuff over and let me put it to my contact at Netflix and see what... You know, and go from see, there, yeah. Yeah, basically see what, see what they say. And um, so they sent it to them and, uh, yeah, they were interested in doing more Stranger Things stuff. So obviously they had some more, like, Stranger Things have become quite a big brand as well. You know, like I said, Primark, H&M and yeah. all places like that. Is this, was this before? Was this after season two had come out, or was it? No, this is this was after. What season are they on now? Four, four, on it? Three, four, five. What Three. It? No, it can't be that many. I don't know. Oh, whatever. The last, thing, I think the it's last four. one, the most recent one. Yeah, so it was after that had come out. Yeah, and I'd already watched it, and it'd already been out for a while, like the whole thing. So yeah, so obviously I was thinking, oh, it's a bit late, but because it was such a big thing, there's. You know, they, they keep pumping out this artwork and you see it everywhere, like even still. Like I've got, I was in HMV the other day with my son looking at some action figures, got a lot of shit in there. They've got new merch for Stranger Things out now. And yeah. It's been out for, well, it must be nearly a year. Yeah, yeah, for or sure. Maybe it was just for, whatever, you know what I mean. Yeah. Anyway. And so where, does your, where does your stuff feature then? Well, this is what I don't know yet. So okay. I don't even know if I should be talking about it. Right. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't okay. know. I had to sign a, what's it, NDR? We haven't, NDA, NDA, yeah, we yeah. haven't said anything. I, well, I don't know, man. I'm sure talking about it is nothing. But um, that's what I don't know at the moment. That's, what's, that's what bugged me. Because I drew that ages ago. I feel like ages ago. It was like October, November. Mm. And, um, it does feel like ages ago, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah it feels like so long ago, man. And, I drew, and obviously, it's, this is for fucking Netflix, man. I was excited. The day I finished it, I was like, right. This better be on Netflix front page. Yeah, in the program. Right. I'm not happy. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but that's no, cool. And so I waited and I waited on it. And I kept bugging him, uh, my my friend, and um, eventually he said like they've been talking to him, and he said I've got the all clear to share it. So I was like, yeah, man, let's get this online. And um, and yeah, at the moment I think what's going on is they they I don't know if this is right, but they have like a a pack they take to brands. Or like um like stores mm. like US, UK, Europe, everything like that. And then the stores kind of bid which ones they get to sell at their do you know what I mean? Oh, so Something like that. So okay. I don't know where mine will come, but you know, it'll be one of them places, if yeah. any. It might not. Like the fact is that I've but got mate, to work. So even do that, yeah, do you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's crazy. And, and I have to again. write an invoice for Netflix. Yeah. What? That is sick. <laughs> yeah, that was sick. But the the worst thing is, well, I'll tell you a little thing. When I did that. So, like, just roll back a bit here. I started illustrating more because I wanted to try... I've always loved um, these artists like... Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of Ken Taylor or Aaron Hawkey or anything like that. Okay. Right? If you get a chance to look them up, they're really good, like, seriously good inspiration for toes mm. as well, man. But they're not terrorists. They're, they do, like, um, collectible gig posters and, like, alternative movie posters. Ah, and stuff like that, yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. I love all that stuff. I always wanted to get into it. All right, this is something from, like... Back when I started tattooing, this is what I was, the artwork I was into was kind of leaning towards that. Mm. Um, so over the last year, when I started having the kids every other week and I started getting into illustrating them more, I thought, oh, let's fucking try. Let's, it'll feel like another job. It feels like I've started from scratch or something, but it feels good. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so I started doing that and this was the first thing that came of it. Mm. I didn't have anything else at the time. I think I might have done a couple of things for some friends' bands and stuff like that. But this is the first thing that comes. So obviously, it's a big deal. Yeah. But what made it even better is that the scene that I drew for Stranger Things, and I really might be shooting myself in the foot here. <laughs> <laughs> the scene that I drew for Stranger Things is the scene out of the program where he's paying Metallica on top of the trailer. Oh, yeah. Metallica saw the drawing and went, can you draw us something? Fuck off. And I was like, what? Yeah, really? man, Who, who contacted you from Metall Metallica then? Well, it's, it's can't difficult, say. man. No, I can't. No, I have. I did draw something for them. I did a, a mock-up. Mm. The, the, the one I actually put online, the Vecna, it's like a red one, was actually supposed to be for them. That, to the point where we put their logo over and everything. Yeah. Right? But we just didn't hear anything. Mm. It was like, it was radio silence, man. It was just like, it got sent off and they didn't even like... Acknowledge anything yeah don't even know if they looked at it like Netflix got back straight away and did their thing but I was like come on man. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah it's that rock star thing isn't yeah. it? but you'll, you'll get it in like you'll get it in a few days man, and you'll be like, oh, there yeah, you go. that's it you never know but that was that was like for me Stranger Things Netflix is obviously a, probably a bigger deal but for me personally like I, when I when I loved art when I was like 13 man Pusshead 
There's this guy who used to draw the posters from Metallica back in like the 80s and early 90s. Sick. And he was like one of my idols for drawing. Mm. And now I'm in a position to be doing something that he'd done all that time ago. I was like, oh. Full circle, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah man. Mate, you mean, you've, you've obviously been manifesting it from back in the day, oh, you know man, what I mean? I've just manifested everything all the damn time. Yeah. Like, why not fucking aim high? You know you'll, I mean? get there, you'll get closer to it if you aim higher than, than these bog standard aims. No, man, you want to aim up. There. Yeah, Keep yeah, going. yeah. 100%. Yeah. Like, otherwise, what's the point, isn't it? Yeah, fuck it, man. So true. Right, little word about some of my favourite cartridges from Ghost. These are the Nano, and obviously, as the name suggests, they're designed for a lot of the finer work. These go all the way down to a 0.18mm up to a 0.35. Now, the ones I've got here are a three liner in the 0.2 and a one liner in the 0.25. Make sure you go and grab yourself some exclusively from Star. If you use the code ATFCT10, you'll get 10% off as well. Yeah, man, that's, it's really impressive. Talk to me, I mean, talking about music there. Yeah. Um, obviously, and like kind of life outside of tattooing. Um, I guess I want to know a little bit, which is something because I'm just shit at it, okay. is achieving like work-life balance, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I know you obviously you do a little bit you do obviously other stuff outside yeah. of tattooing. Front man of a metal band. Yeah. Um, talk to me a bit about that, about the music and, and the kind music. Of, okay, yeah, so and where that how that happened. So that that started when I was like fourteen. Mm. I was like, hi shit, girlfriend at the time, my actual current drummer's brother, and someone else. Like, oh, should we start a band, man? Yeah, sick. And that yeah. was like it was called Concrete Coffin, man. Right. Fresh metal, everything. Yeah, it just <laughs> ripped off every fresh metal band, and it was just fun. It was just good time, and uh, yeah, it just kept going. It just didn't stop. Members changed, everything changed around, and um, I think it got a bit more serious when I was like 18, 19, 20. Yeah, and in my early twenties was mainly just gigs everywhere we could, and all independent bands. So it's just you know, it's, it's a sick, if you're an artist and in a band, perfect. Drawing all the t-shirts, you sell them at gigs, you get your artwork out there everywhere, man. Yeah. Really good. And were you doing that for a bit? Oh, I wouldn't let anyone fucking touch your artwork. But I was like, no. Because like, I, I, in my head, if, I, if someone else come near, I'd be like, hmm. So this is, get, yeah, I bet. <laughs> and what, no one's going to come in. You're the fucking front yeah, man who does know. the drawings. Like, what? Oh, man, I was like, mm, no, I yeah, know, yeah, I'm yeah, not paying anyone to do this shit. Like, um, and it was fun because it, it, it kind of gives, um, I feel like it is good to get other artists in to do stuff, 100%. But sometimes when you've got like, the same person who does the artwork, it gives a bit of a, a face to the band sometimes, you know? It doesn't always work. Like one of my, uh, another one of our favorite artists, this guy called John Baisley, he's the singer of one of my favorite bands and he does all the artwork for them and you can see it through the albums and it works, man. It just mm. looks like they're fucking great. Like, and that works. And I love that idea that, you know, like the artwork was all similar. Yeah. Not always the same, but similar. Yeah. And it's um, all kind of one thing. Then, yeah, right? and it all kind of flows and it, you know, if, the, if I don't know what the fucking word would be, but yeah, it works. That, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, what you're saying, um, I, I had kids when I was 24. So up until that point, I was just having a good time. When I had kids, I tried to balance it all and I feel like it, it took a toll on me. Like I had a, I, I feel like when I, like, I love being a dad, but I feel like I lost a bit of myself. Mm. And that wasn't because I had kids. It was because I was trying to do too much. You know, I didn't want to lose what I had before. And I wanted to be a great dad. Mm. And you can't have it all. You know, yeah. you've got to kind of step back a bit and like... Prioritise. Yeah, yeah, but like without making yourself upset. And I think that's what I did. I tried to prioritise too much because I wanted to retain what my you know, who I was as a human beforehand and who I was now and realised that people depended on me and I couldn't, you know, that's why I feel like, you know, it's, you either be selfish and like don't bother with your kids or you put everything to your kids and like you fuck the rest of it off. Trying to keep in the middle there, it's hard. Yeah, but I mean, I've not, I haven't got kids, no, but, but I can, do you like, know what I mean? I can imagine, yeah. It's, it's I think what, if you, if you embrace it properly and you find that balance, it's, it's not as mad as people make it out to be. Yeah. But, and it's, it's really inspirational, man, because you've got these two people who look up to you for everything and everything you do is cool as shit. Mm. It doesn't matter what you do. They love it. Yeah. And if they love it, you love it. Fuck everyone else. <laughs> you know Too what I mean? Right. So that's it. So I, I, I love every second of it. And they're, they're, um, 
seven and uh, nine now, so they're a bit older, so they can kind of look after themselves. I don't need to wipe their asses anymore. It's all good. Mm. So, um, but yeah, now I think in the last, I think where I was and I didn't find that balance and I wanted to retain my hobbies and I wanted to, but I wanted to be a good dad. I, yeah, I did lose a bit of myself and it was difficult. It made it, it made it hard. I, I kind of, I had to reevaluate at one point. Like I went through a divorce and then that kind of made me, you know, when you, you hit that point in your life. Yeah, and you had to watch to reflect, that. yeah? Yeah, I had to reflect because I had kind of, at the time I felt like I'd lost everything. You know, I was going for a lot at that point, but that was my rock bottom. Now I feel like some people need to hit rock bottom to realize, you know, to build them back up, but in the Absolutely. right way. And I did, and I feel like I'm in a much better place now than I was. And that's not due to anyone, it's due to myself and how mm. I dealt with my life at the time. Yeah. Where I'm dealing with my life now is, yeah, I don't make it any easier, but I have like my routines, I do my thing. Like I'm, you know, I'll still go to the gym four or five times a week. I'll, you know, make these videos with the kids. I spent all week with the I'm basically a single dad when I got my kids, you know, mm. and that's out of choice. I've got a girlfriend and my brother lives in the house as well, but I like doing the things. I don't want to miss out on taking the school in the morning. I don't mm. want to miss out on picking them up. I want to be there. I want to be that influence in their life. Yeah. It's like you said earlier, isn't it? It's like, if I'm going, I'm going at two and that's it. With yeah. The, with the work, like, you know? that's it. I don't give a shit if I've got two lines left, man. Get the fuck out of my chair and leave the shot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Yeah. No, but I, it is, it is how it is. Like, it is, I mean, other than the fact that, yeah, you got to get them, but they're just going to be standing there in the cold waiting for me. Yeah. But, uh, but that is my week with them is my week with them, mm. you know, and I will make that work. Even if I have to like make sure the tattoos because I fuck rushing toes. I hate I hate when I have to rush you know what I'm saying yeah but it's <laughs> even just a, it's even going into it with the concept that you might have to rush oh the stress straight away yeah no, or like, I like I mean, it, and I'm not like I can't slag clients off but like then sometimes clients might you know I mean you might be feeling the pressure I'll have that sometimes and they go oh you know I've got to yeah I've you, got don't got to be... want, you don't want them to feel like that yeah 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 I don't want them to feel like that and I don't want to feel like I've got to shoot yeah. you know but then sometimes yeah life gets in the way it does but I think there's a way of dealing with it where you can you know you can make, make your customer understand that you're not in a rush to finish their tattoo you're just in a rush with yourself and your yeah. your plans like and what's the in that in that instance what's the best thing to do <sighs> what is the best thing to do? <laughs> <laughs> i mean I, i'm just straight with them from the moment i get in there i say uh, to be honest at the moment i wouldn't book anything and i knew i couldn't do i either book pieces in that i think it's going to take two hours and i'm always wrong about and they mm. take about three but i've got four so i'm good yeah or ongoing pieces which i just tell them that would just chip away you know a back piece saying getting a couple of hours in yeah sweet like, yeah yeah, yeah. On large scale the thing is i mean i can imagine it doesn't quite work for my stuff like oh, all no, of mine yeah. tends to be like one hit but for the larger scale stuff yeah i would i would oh, yeah, i man. would love that about working larger scale going back a little bit to about what we were just saying as well um i, I wanted to ask you like was there a, I, I presume at one point you kind of had to make the decision where it was like tattooing or pursuing the music was that was there ever that kind of like decision to be made well it wasn't just that man it was tattooing pursuing music and yeah. then the kids come along and the kids yeah you know and it was like and that's not that's not even talking about the probably 17 other hobbies that I was like eventually these can become professions yeah <laughs> <laughs> so uh, but the, yeah. and I think there was um, it was in the back of my mind but I was quite clued up on the fact that making money as a musician is like a non-starter unless you're big Mm -hmm. you know or like you're fucking involved like you've got a bit you, you need some like capital at the beginning you know rich parents or some shit man so yeah pumping money i've heard of it, it happening you know? yeah so i knew that even if we become busy in the music i'm going to be keeping my job because mm -hmm. uh, i know a lot of bands who are doing really damn good and now yeah about like maybe even a million odd followers on instagram and whatever anywhere else and they still got day jobs it's just the music industry is, I'm not sure exactly really? now how it is, but it is like hard, you know, especially with the income of the streaming platform stuff over the, the last The day. vision that you have is that it's like, it would just be like touring every- And it would. All of, yeah. Yeah. But luckily with this job, I can take that. Mm. You know, if we're touring around the world and we're stopping off in Germany for three nights at all, like 
Probably not back then because there was a lot more that, you know, I How did you do that with kids? Do you know what I mean? That's, like... that's it. That's where it had to change. It wasn't the tattooing because I could take that on tour. Mm. You know, I could take that. I could guess at studios. I can. Backstage. Yeah, like man in the tour bus. Like, like, you just oh, finished oh, doing yeah. like a full set and then yeah, like, st- man, start on working. Stage, shit. Oh, yeah, on stage, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, but th- yeah, there was no tattoo in there. Like, but, uh, if I was drunk, I was hung over. If I was hung, you know, God knows. Like, mm. but it was more the fact that the, my family come about, and um, that was like a, you know, it wasn't a question. Like, I knew what I was, what was going to happen then. Yeah. Like, I couldn't. I, I'd, I'd spoke to the because we got signed, and I, from day one before we signed anything, I said, "Look, got two kids. I can't go on tour for eight months." I have to come back at some mm. point or there has to be a way that I could take them with me, which would be sick as shit. But, you know, it means more money for you to be putting in, yeah. you know? Like, you're going to have to be paying for hotels and fucking nappies because I ain't paying for that. Yeah, well, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah um, too, right. So, yeah, it, it, it for me, I say luckily, it's not how I wanted it to go, nor the rest of the band, but it did work out as we planned and we went back to being independent. And then we kind of went on hiatus for a bit. Mm-hmm. And now we're actually recording again. Like, it was oh, nice. set, yeah, it was set. We've just, just about to finish the last, do like, uh, lay vocals in the last song. So it's cool, man. We've got a demo that's been sitting there for eight years, which is difficult, by the way, because the vocals then, compared to what I'd sing about now, then oh, just, okay. <laughs> right. Subject matter. Massively, man. Right. Angry at women. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but now okay. it's all like libraries and cut hills. Yeah, yeah. And, and hiking. <laughs> yeah, tea. Yeah. Yeah. You know and what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even drink now, man. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, it's, it's, uh, oh, man, I've lost myself again. What was I saying? No, 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 it's good. <laughs> If you're enjoying the podcast this week, don't forget to leave us a rating and a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. It really helps the podcast grow. I guess what I was going to say, going back, going back to tattooing. Yeah. um, Talking a little bit about, um, no, I've forgotten. Ah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Oh oh, yeah, that was it. Um, yeah cool so going back to tattooing you've obviously been in the industry 18 years Um, I guess what I really want to know is what have you seen firsthand change the most in it in that time Um, and yeah okay that's the question (laughs) (laughs) yeah well mainly it's the uh, it's the social media side of things 100% Mm. everything's a byproduct of that like like I say, when I started, the the tattoos we were doing, there was a lot of flash on the walls and it was all, no one cared about getting the same tattoo 50 times. Like, you know, everyone was getting the same one off the wall. We had a sheet that was just called the Money Maker, and it was just a red devil, a blue dolphin, same, a couple of bits of tribal. It's yeah. just whatever. How many of them blue dolphins I've seen oh, as well? Oh, man. And how many have you covered? Like, yeah, how man. many has everyone covered, man? Do you know what I mean? But, I've made, see, by always, doing them, always like on the hip. Yeah, yeah that's it, man. <laughs> on the hip, back of the shoulder. Back of the shoulder, yeah. But I feel like I did people justice by doing them back then because it, the people love doing cover ups. They've got lots of work because of me. Do you know what I mean? That's it. But no, nah, it was. Only reason you're in a job. <laughs> yeah, that's it, man. Them damn dolphins. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so there were styles. Obviously, there were styles then as well. And people went to styles like, like I said, the guy who hired me, um, he's biomechanical, like, He's done that solidly since then. And it's mm. very, it's, it's a lot more niche now, but he's smashing it with it, like really good. Um, but it was harder to find them styles. Mm. You had to go into a tattoo studio and like, you know, kind of like see what's in the books or what did these tattoos do? It was a lot of walking around and inquiring, like more word of mouth sort of thing. And then um, I think I had a... Magazines, pre-social Mag- media. Magazines were sick. Yeah, actually. Was that, that right really there. the true way of really sh- having artists sort of showcase? Yeah, maybe? I think so. I remember like, because it was like... At least in the UK. I had to send a CDR with my images on to them in the post. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, serious. To get in the, in, on the magazine. And I remember getting the magazine. It was like, wow, that's like a dream. Oh, shit, yeah. man, I mean, skin shots. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was sick. Yeah, that and, is um, sick. And then, uh, so that was a really good way. But you, you had to. The majority of people, I feel like, who weren't in, who weren't enthusiasts that weren't into tattoos, would just walk around or, or be like told, like they might, you know, see a cool guy or a film or something with like a Japanese sleeve and think, oh, I need to find an artist. In their heads, everyone does Japanese, yeah. and they'd be right. Everyone would t- attempt to do Japanese. Attempt to do it, yeah, yeah. because it was like a 
a popular thing then. Koi carps, damn, mm. bright reds, all right. Like, yeah. Everyone was doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, what was the popularity of tattooing like back then? Was, was, there a, was there a lot of work readily available or was it, was it kind of touch and go at some points? I think it could be quiet, yeah, definitely. Um, but it was, uh, it was busy enough, but more on walk-ins. Like, mm. It was, bookings were fewer and far between, fewer and far between then. I mean, again, it depends on the artist. I mean, you had like artists who were smashing it, you know, still now. Like I remember one of the first artists, like one of the first books. Yeah. That got me not into tattooing, but into styles more was uh, Boog from the Streets with Love, mm. the script book. Yeah. Sick, massive book, gold letters. I was like, oh, wow, it's a treasure, man. And it was great. And it was him and Philip Lou as well. Was it Nipper was talking, I think, in the previous episode about like Boog. Philip Lou. Yeah, and Boog. Philip Lou. I've, I heard Tommy Farrow talking about yeah. Philip Lou. Yeah. So he he's like the wizard, the grand wizard of yeah. tattooing, man. He like. Last I heard, this might be a, a, a myth, but he works from some hut in the Swiss Alps. I don't know if that's true, but I'm not even joking. Someone told me that they... I'm pretty sure the guy I know who got a back piece from him said that he had to get a train to Switzerland, another train into the mountains, and then a small, like, cart up the mountains into some hut somewhere. Really? Like, legend has it. Man, legend has it. Yeah. This guy is in a cave <laughs> <laughs> somewhere in the Swiss Alps. But man, yeah, it, so, and that was, that was the, um, yeah, they were the artists that had the styles, but they were all like, I say household names, you know, with yeah. you know, tattoo studio names. Everyone knew who they were and there was only a few of them. Um, but most of the money came from the walk-ins, came from whatever was on the walls. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it was definitely busy then. It was profitable. I was making good money. I remember mm. at the time I, was, I moved out within two weeks of starting tattooing. Like, I was like, done. I've got money. Everything's cash. Everything is cash. Uh, yeah, brilliant. Yeah. And um, anyway, well, so... not for much longer, mate. No, no. no. It's just... Economic climate. No, no. I think, like, I, well, I barely take cash anymore now. Mm. It's just, it's hard. Yeah. Like, and most of the money cash I get has to go back in the bank anyway. <laughs> so that was the point. I know. But, um... So yeah, in what's what kind of what was what's the main thing that you've seen really kind of evolve or change? Definitely the social, like the the online presence. Yeah, See, it's yeah. changed everything. I think I had a, I had a MySpace when it started, and it had toes on it, which is mad. And then Facebook back when fake you could custom the colours and stuff for the back screen of Facebook and shit like that. And it was just uh, starting from where I started, I went through the motions of all that. Mm. So I. Did you get onto social? Because obviously you've got quite a following. Did you get onto socials quite early or were you a bit late to the party and it kind of happened quite quick? I don't think I was... My following didn't really come about until about eight years ago, eight, nine years ago. And, it, and then it came fast. Yeah. Up until then, I think when I opened this studio, um, I think I had about 10,000, which isn't bad in, at all. Like it was sick, but it's nothing to what it is now. Mm. I remember there was a little, like me and this uh, other tattooist, Mark Jellyman, who does all like uh, geology yeah. and stuff. And he worked here for a while and we was like joking around, like, because we'd always be close to each other, then one would overtake the other. You know, it'd be like some stupid game, like, oh, okay, oh, yeah, who's yeah. got more followers and shit, like rubbing <laughs> at each other, like, you know, patting each other's balls and shit like that, you know? <laughs> and then, um, uh, and so I remember at the time that was where we was at and we was doing good and it was great. But then, um, yeah, and I, I remember like I said about the dagger, the, the knife with the face in it, that's when I snowballed and it was going up thousands and thousands and thousands each week. Like, it was yeah. mad. Like, and that was when Instagram was good. Yeah. You know, there when it was made a, sense. It was when chronological. It made sense, and, man. Yeah. And you saw everyone's work and the everyone had a damn good time. It was like a party every time we went on there. Like, shit, everyone could see each other. <laughs> yeah, that's it, literally. Yeah, now it's fucked. <laughs> mm. It like, used to be there was like a certain time every evening or yeah, whatever, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. and like there'd be a battle to get at the top of the page just chronologically. It, I remember that. And you know what? Pre-story. There weren't stories. Were no, there weren't stories or anything like that. Like... And I, this, is, this sounds sad because it makes, it sound like I like fucking go mad over how many likes I get on a post. But about three or four years ago, I'd get around three to 4,000 likes per post. Now I get between six and eight hundred. Mm. So in my that's the and and you know it's in your head like shit. Like am I doing so wrong? The yeah. Fuck am I shit? Am I losing it? Am I know, fuck. I'm... I've started to quit. Like fuck this, man. Yeah. So I go become a you know a, a landscape photographer now. Like what the fuck is going on? <laughs> and um, 
And yeah, uh, so you could, it, that, there's, I feel like that's sort of the proof of the change. Mm-hmm. Like you can see it in your work. You, you don't blame yourself. Like you haven't done anything wrong. Yeah. Like don't. There's, there's people I follow who like, but then I haven't, because I've maybe not liked their stuff yeah. recently, they've like, I still follow them, but it, I'm not seeing any of their new anything. stuff. Yeah. Um, coupled with obviously some people kind of, their material drops, but you've kind of just continued to post regularly. You know what I mean? Like you're, and you've, you've got like a real gallery of your work on there, you know? Yeah, I feel like that, I did, there was a there was a point where I wanted it to look, my Instagram to look consistent. Like I said, I hate sitting here talking like it's so important, but it is work. It's where you get your work from. So yeah. it should be, it, you should put thought into it to a point. Mm. You know, like I'm not really on it for fun. I'm on it because that's where I get, nowadays is pretty much where I get all the work from. Yeah. So there, there was a point, I wanted it to look consistent. I want it to be cool. But I think where everything's changed so much, I've stopped giving so much of a shit about it mm. now, which is uh, why I wanted to do a bit more of the YouTube stuff. I feel like where they've kind of fucked it a bit by trying to be a bit more like TikTok and shit like that, they brought it back to being fun again. Yeah. You don't see, you know you're not going to see your friends on there, so let's just post some dick pics. Let's just yeah. see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you could be a bit more experimental with what you put online. Yeah. You know, so... um um, as mentioned in a previous video, silicon foregrip system, but they're Japanese steel and they've got a needle stabilization system as well. Nice and smooth, really accurate and just nice and strong and sharp. So I was looking, I mean, obviously you kind of got back, you got back into YouTube yeah. now. Um, so yeah, I, I guess I just want to know like, where are you kind of taking that? What's your vision for what you're going to do with that, with that channel? I d really don't know. Like I, the main reason I started doing it is because I enjoy putting the videos together. I love, but really love films, the way they look. Like, I love a good, like, arty fucking film, man. Mm. Good colour tones and the sounds. I love that shit. And I know it's going to look weird putting it in a YouTube video, but it's still, I can have my fun with it, you know? Yeah. So that's the main reason I'm doing it. I think you said in your video, you prefer like longer videos, but quality over quantity. Yeah. So obviously like Instagram, TikTok, they're all designed for this like short that's and snappy it, rows. That's, YouTube, yeah, you can kind of yeah. express it a bit more. I can, I can put a bit more time into one thing and I can have some fun. Like before you got here and I had some free time, I just recorded a few others, mm -hmm. like more experimenting because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. And it's really like, um, what do I say? Like, I think that when you're doing something like a bit more... Uh, like the long format stuff, mm. you've really got a, um, how do I explain it? Like you've got to be confident in what you're talking about. So you've got to like, yeah, you're not trying to cram all of the material. There's a lot, it's a lot, yeah. but you can kind of really develop. But on that's the it. And I feel like it's easy to think are you, why does anyone care what I'm saying? Yeah. So my kind of the fuel for me to do what I'm talking about in them, is the fact I've had this time on my side. Like, talking mm. about, you know, they have going from MySpace through to Facebook and stuff. Like that. that sort of stuff, you know, I might, I've picked up good and bad things from that whole time of tattooing. Yeah, someone man. even, like, who's been tattooing for seven years might have not seen half of that shit, you know, and it might be helpful to them. Yeah. 100%. And I can't do, like, Mike Stockings that were tips, sick. Mm. Man, I love that shit. Comes yeah. up and I'm like, no fucking way. Yeah, what I appreciate is when is when people kind of share, do you know what I mean? Yeah. The sharing is caring it. with this sort of stuff, for sure, man. That's what I'm trying to do with the, with the, with the podcast know, as this, well. This like, is great, because there's, there's not, um, like I said, James, the guy who works in here, like, he's into his podcast, and I'm not so much up until recently... But I, I hadn't, I hadn't, until yours, I hadn't really heard of another tattoo podcast. I was like, yeah, this is sick, man. I don't see this before. This is, Appreciate this that, is man. Banging. Well, it's, and it's cool, like, going by, like I told you before, like, I've purposely not listened to anything yet. I want to get into it after. I wouldn't be surprised. And this is nice. This mm. isn't what I expected it to be like. Yeah. You know. Fucking like, hell, what did you expect this to be? Well, I just thought it'd be a bit more like, when I, when I was in the band, it was very much questions by the sheet. Because mm. there would be like there'd be a journalist working for a magazine who wanted to know certain things, and that's it. It yeah. wouldn't be a chat because obviously they don't know who the fuck I am. Mm. They probably don't even heard the band before, but they need to get an interview done to meet a quota, you know, to meet like a deadline. Yeah. So there's no personality to interview. You're literally just how long really you enough. What's the music? What's your influences? Blah 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 blah. Yeah. Cool. See you later. Thanks. And mm. half the time, like 
you know, I didn't really get a chance to answer because they were done so fast. Mm. So there's there's no heart in it at all. This has heart. Yeah. You know, oh, this has so. this has soul, man. Like you you get the best out of person when it is a chat. Mm. You know, and like you know what to ask, which is great as well. So it's like, you know, I'm not left hanging or feeling awkward no, as shit. No, like I've been doing my research, mate. Don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> yeah, that's what I like. Yeah, it's, it's good. good. <laughs> and that's what I want to portray in my stuff. When mm. I put the YouTube videos out, I want people to not feel like I'm just giving a lesson. No, I'm not just giving a lesson. I want, I want it to... Like, I want them to understand that I was also in them positions. Yeah. And still am now, to a point. Like, when I'm talking... You know, I don't know it all. Like, mm. I don't know it all. Like, I'm just telling you what I feel works for me. Yeah. And if that might work for you, then brilliant. You've learned something. If not, then you'll find another way to do it. Yeah. Every day I'm finding new ways to do things. Even now, even from people who've just started tattooing, I haven't seen the fucking world of it. They might have picked up something that I have not seen. Yeah, but you've seen, seen a lot more of the world than, than they might have done. So, so there might be some more things I can pass 100%. on. This is it. But I like it I to be it. more of a conversation... You know, so like people can still, you know, drop me if they want a certain thing done, like put in the comments, shit like that. You know, like like if Instagram or TikTok and that wasn't so fast, could do it like that. Yeah, definitely every post, the com the comments might be more of a conversation. But I feel like that's another good thing about like YouTube is mm. they they seem to be more of a conversation sometimes. Yeah, for sure. So you can get into it a little bit more. It's more of a like feels like more of an interactive audience yeah. at least you, at least on that level. YouTube as well. So these go out on yeah. on. on podcast platforms but also on YouTube yeah. as well so because obviously I think there's a lot of people like to watch it you know yeah that's it um, so yeah it's good no I love it man it's, it's a really great attitude to have this is actually quite a good time for me to give you the question left by the previous guest okay and that question was I would probably like to ask the next guest you know what they think of uh, the direction that the industry is going you know oh okay So I think now that a lot of people have kind of not so much completely given up, but given up on the idea that fame in tattooing won't come from your social media account, I think that's going to have a big part to play in how the rest of uh, how the industry is heading. Mm. And I feel like it's, it might go backwards a bit in a good way. It might become more of the word of mouth. Like um, you will go searching for tattooists but you'll have to you know you'll have to look oh, where would you look I don't even know it's hard man yeah. like you can't rely but social social media must have like a point there must be a yeah. peak you know where it kind of drops well it's definitely you've seen it over the last couple of years where it's it's the pictures have gone to more videos and mm. but then what next like if you're talking completely long time I don't think tattoo is going to be start done by machines anytime soon but then even you've got to consider the AI art and how that's going now I don't know yeah. if you've seen a lot into that recently but that's caused a massive fuss with the art industry outside yeah. of tattoo like, and there'll be like semi-permanent tattoos that will yeah, stay on for man. a few months and then they'll yeah. I didn't think that's a thing already Hey, I think that's a thing already, isn't it? Is it I think fully you get three month tattoos? Can you get three month there like I'm transfers? Pretty sure. Yeah, or like well, during or a few years, or who knows? Yeah. yeah. So that's like, and I think that's how it's going. I think I do think that the design side of tattooing will change in a bit more of a long term, maybe 10, 20 years. You'll be able to input stuff like you. You've seen the AI art now. It's all about prompts. You put in a couple of words, and some of these pictures. Like I, I started following this guy because I thought he's. Landscape pictures were beautiful, man. Mm. Like, oh, it's a lovely. I zoomed in and went, well, that ain't a fucking tree. And I was like, shit, man, this is AI. Some guy has gone in there, typed in, you know, uh, mountain range at dusk, trees, autumn, and it has made this picture that would have never been anywhere else before. And I thought it was a photograph. That's scary. Yeah. Because then... If you trans, especially for it's not it's not so much scary because you kind of got to embrace this stuff at the same time. So it's scary in the fact that anyone can then do art with this thing and make people believe they did it. Mm. But it's also you have to embrace the way it's heading. So you either like spend your time slagging it off and like calling it every name you can think of, yeah. and then just stay behind of everyone else, or like how can I incorporate in this into my work, mm. like. I think it'd be great for people like like black like more of the black and grey realism stuff because you know uh, we had a lot of them working in here like they merge in pictures together and things like that. Yeah, but to give like a real yeah, it's cool. That's it. it's, and, it's just and, the, the, and advancing technology, isn't yeah. it? I guess. And it's and it and it's worth looking into and because 
at least with AI, every time you type something, it's going to be an original piece. Mm. And then if you take that, modify it in Photoshop, Procreate, whatever, and make something new out of it, it will be an original piece each time. You might not have drawn it from scratch, but if you're doing it for tattoos, so what? Like if someone's asked you for something, make the most of what you can. But I feel like the industry is heading towards that more and I want you will get your like traditionalist like there is now like the whole thing with like coils and rotaries and yeah. you know I, I know a few artists it'll still it'll, they'll still have their people who are into tattooing as mm. as a history and like so I, I for me personally I like to see tattooing as a bit more of a separate medium like you've got your paintbrushes your pencils your needles there you go like you've got the few yeah. things for you to like it's just Get another medium, it's I guess. It's another medium, yeah. like skin's your next paper mm. as opposed to a canvas, you know? Yeah. New medium. Whereas I think a mentality of a lot of people who are more into tattooing, the mm. history, the art behind it. That's why you get a lot, lot of like traditional artists that I know who are sick traditional artists, but they all use coils. Mm. And in my head, I'm like, man, why? Yeah, they're just keeping the, keeping the old school but it's good, and alive. they like that. Yeah, yeah, And that's yeah, cool. Yeah. And, it, and, it, and it makes it look, you know, they see tattooing as more of a... Like they're enthusiasts of the trade, mm. you know. Whereas, like a lot of other people, you know, I, I'm not sure how you see it yourself, but for me personally, I'm an enthusiast of the art, and I see it as a medium more yeah. so. Yeah, you know, I would say I would say I'm probably that as well yeah. for sure. Um, like I you got into way. I got into tattooing because of my love for art. Yeah, and and tattooing felt like the kind of uh, the most logical. Uh, and practical way for me to express my work, I guess. And I guess make a living out of it. And make well. a living yeah. out of it for sure. Like I and I'd had I'd been getting tattoos before I started tattooing, yeah. and that just being around the whole culture and, the, and in That's shops, it, and I just liked it. And do I you know feel what like I mean? it's a really positive way for artists to make money if they're into it. Don't I'm not saying start tattooing if you're not into tattooing, but you know you what's that like cliche but, shit where like, people you say oh you're you're studying art, you're never going to make a living. Yeah. You know, like bullshit. But I've had, I think I, I helped my parents run, a, uh, my, my family run a couple of bars when I was younger. That's it. Mm. I've had, I think I did a Christmas temp at Woolworths when that was still open, man. <laughs> and that's the only other job I've had. Yeah. I've been a terrorist ever since, so that's it. And I, and going from a school where like, all I wanted to do was graphic design and art. Yeah. And, and then people kind of like deflated, like, oh, you're never going to get anywhere. Yeah, like, I think it? my parents were quite, you know, pushy about yeah. move, like, it. They were good about it. Um, but the other people were like, oh, well, you know, I'm studying business and I'm studying that. And like, yeah, good for you. Good, good at it. If you enjoy it, fucking congratulations. Well done. I hope you do good. But that's not what I'm into, you know. And then I, you know, and then yeah. there you go. You're making a living out, a, a respectable, decent Living out of it, man. For sure. I mean, I was, I was always kind of told that, you know, at uni, got to yeah. do that, you know. And I guess I'd like to make sure that with my kids, it was like, if you've got an interest in it, just like do it. Yeah. Go in. That's and it. Like, if you love it, do it. Because you will be able to make something of it if you love it. You know what I mean? That's you it. don't I've... have to go and study if studying is not, it's not for everyone, is it? No. Nah. And I feel like, imagine growing up and being at the ages where you're most like susceptible to information and inspiration and you have adults saying, oh, I don't know if you're going to do it. No, you want people to be kicking you up the ass, fucking get out there, you, get yeah. your eye out there and you will make mm. a living out of it. Not teetering on the edge of like, mm, is it a good idea? Nah, fuck that, man. You've got to go all in. And people nurturing that information you're giving them, mm. You want to inspire them to do it. Like, I have no doubt. If my kids want to do whatever the fuck they want to do, mm. and if they want to go to Spain, they want to be an astronaut, you're going to be a damn astronaut, then. You are going to do it. Too right. I'll tell you how, and it'll probably put you off. But <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be an astronaut. Yeah, if, <laughs> if you, you want, want it, to be. If, yeah. you want it, if you want it, if you want it, enough, man. yeah. And the sky's the limit. It goes back to earlier, you know, dream big. Too right. Um, do you know what? Another thing I wanted to just ask you as well, quick point. Because um, I noticed you kind of you use and create NFTs quick yeah um can you explain to me a little bit about for anyone who's listening um just explain what they are um and like yeah why'd you kind of okay what's the vision i don't of know <laughs> <laughs> no I, so I, I i went i was i got into and i still am got into the 3d stuff mm. and it was based it was because of them them towers i was doing i thought oh, i want to make one spin and i did one that span and it was oh that was sick yeah and then 
someone said, oh, you should get a Twitter because it's good for digital artists and for any stuff. So I got a Twitter and mm. I started like, rolling with the motion. And then so if you thought about getting into NFTs because you could sell these animations. So like, no, what's an NFT? And then I started getting into it. I really tried to understand it. Really tried. I never bought one myself. Yeah. But I sold a few. It, it, I'm, I don't quite, I don't, I don't fully get it. No, nah, it's, it's, it is, it's hard to understand. And I mm. get that. I do get that. Um, because at the time I had a lot of people going, why? What's the point? Like, why are you buying a JPEG of someone? And like, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. I don't get it. But when it, the more it was explained to me, I kind of understood like, this is going to sound weird. I'm trying to, I'm going to try and channel the explanation I had. Yeah. Right? When someone buys an expensive piece of art, and I'm talking like the Mona Lisa, yeah, yeah. they don't take the painting. That still stays in the museum, but they get a certificate that says they have ownership of it. Yeah. That's the best way someone explained it to me. You're okay. never going to have this in your hand. Fine. But you have, like, your name is attached to that file so fungible effectively is something that you you can physically hold so non-fungible there we go that is that right am i pronouncing that right that's right yeah. non-fungible token i didn't actually know what fungible meant until just there i'm pretty sure that's what it means isn't it? <laughs> Probably. Is it like is it like tangible like you non-fungible can... token yeah that makes sense well that makes sense non you can't touch it and it's you can't it's not a physical well, it's like crypto isn't it you never yeah. touch the money but you have it mm. do you believe in it yeah you fucking do because it's gonna buy your car you know yeah. what i mean so yeah, yeah, yeah. it's the same and uh, and and that's the way it was it was told to me as well is like it's Imagine, because um, they're worth money, right? So if you bought one off someone and you sold it on, it's then it 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 then becomes like a like an it's like an asset that you can sell on. But it, what I thought was interesting is that asset could become more valuable if the artist gets more valuable, mm. right? So say like, well, of course, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's where it becomes an investment. So you're then investing in that artist. You think that artist is about to kick it's like off? Stocks, almost. Basically, but with an art. Fun. In, yeah, <laughs> it's weird, man. It's no, weird. It's, it, to be honest, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, now. It, yeah. It, and that's how I, you know, talked myself into accepting the idea of doing it. It was uh, I, I had, I'm not going to say it as a a phase, but I definitely got really into it for a little while, and now I don't know how because it, it got really confusing after a while because mm. they started doing. I saw loads of things coming about contracts. I need to read into it a bit more. When I first, when I started doing it, it was when it had a boom and it, everyone was going mad about um, NFTs and ETH and the the, the Bitcoin, uh, not Bitcoin, but uh, the crypto that people were using at the time. Yeah. And then it had this massive dip and I was like, oh, sliding back into the bush, you know, get yeah, out of there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> and, uh, but I don't see, like, I don't see the harm in it. You know, like if you're, Oh, I think it's a great, yeah, I think yeah, it's great. Yeah, like, don't, a lot of the time, like, you're making some of this stuff for a hobby, for a passion anyway. You're going to do it either way. Why not sell it as an NFT? 100%. What harm does it do? Yeah. A lot of people keep, love that. I love how you do, something new comes along and everyone's like, the amount of energy wasted in putting it down, like really making it sound like a stupidest idea ever when it makes no difference to them, whatever. Mm. That really, yeah. But also, like, I love that people hate, but there's no create. You know, yeah. no one's like, all right, you can hate on it, but let's see you have a go. Yeah, let's see you have a go, or come up with something better. That's what I mean. Yeah, that's it. They, that's it. There are a lot of these people. They just what a sad life. And it, and it's same for anything, man. Anything, you know, haters in general. When they take the time to comment on something to say how they don't like it mm. I get why you say you like it because you're bigging that person up mm. it's good it makes them want to do more like it pushes them to do more when you're commenting saying you hate something absolutely nothing is wasted apart from your energy mm. that person just thinks ugh <laughs> that's it yeah. what is the point so yeah that whole hatred for it like I get why people are confused but ask questions yeah, you know and that can go for any kind of art like mm. You just ask questions, man. Like some people love this shit. They really get into it. Why would you want to shit on their passion? Yeah, that's man. it, man. That's yeah. so true. So so true. Um, mate, I, I could literally just sit here and talk to you for hours, too, <laughs> man. It's been really Thanks, good, man. I'm having a good time. Yeah, it's yeah. cool. It's been really good. Um, so I guess just kind of wrapping it up. What yeah. I would love to know, really, from you is where can people find you? Um, I know you were obviously. I mean, you won best of show in Brighton, the Brighton Convention 2018. Yeah. 
Are you at any conventions this year? I'm at Brighton again. You go, I'm going to be at Brighton, so I'll yeah, see you there. It's a good convention, I love that yeah. place. A little story about Woody, right? Yeah. Just quickly. <laughs> <laughs> when I first started tattooing, this is before Brighton Toe Convention was even a twinkle in his ball sack. Um, he used to deliver, like... Uh, supplies to studios out the back of a van. Yeah, that's what I put out there, man. Sick. Yeah. He used to come. He used to get annoyed at me, and I know he still remembers that. He used to call me up and be like, "Well, I'll be in the studio in five minutes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be in the studio in five minutes. Do you want anything?" I'm like, "Yeah, can I have a box of needles, some things, or whatever." And he went, "Well, you're going to be long because he knew I was always like, yeah, and I'll always be like, yeah, I'll be out in five minutes. I was on the bus in Bromley on the way to Croydon. I'm going to be like an hour and a half. Oh, and they were standing. No. I was such." wanker but I didn't want to miss out on the needles yeah so I'm just going to publicly apologise to you now Woody because I don't think I've ever done it before <laughs> sorry I wasted your fucking time man <laughs> I love it mate yeah it's going to be sick this year I'm looking forward to yeah, getting man. done wait, oh, London I don't know if you'd seen the new London one it's pretty cool yeah the, yeah. So the, the first one last year yeah I went to that I'm going to be there this year I think that was pretty sick man and then um that's all I got. Are you uh, that you're working that one? Yeah, and the UK TTA. So we're doing all the same ones. Bro. Oh man, we're gonna be friends. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, bro. Yeah, man, Mate, so, yeah. so 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 exciting. Um, have you got a question that you want to leave for the next guest? Yeah. So I was gonna say, if tattooing was never a thing, what would your art look like? Oh. If tattooing had never entered your life, it was never even a thought, how would your art look now? That is a good question. Yeah, like, because you're like, how, where are you getting your, yeah. you know what I mean? You're picking stuff up. So if you're not, if you're not, if you haven't got tattooing going on the brain, do you think you'd be drawing like you're drawing a tattoo now? Mm. You know, that's, I thought that was interesting. I've, I've asked myself that before and I yeah. don't know how to answer that. No, that's smart. I like that one a lot. Yeah, so, cool, yes, man. Uh, there we go. Have Sick. fun with that next person. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, bro. Um, right, mate. So good. What? We are going to do a little surprise for you. This okay. is the last thing that we're going to do for the episode. We've got a drawing challenge. Oh, fuck. <laughs> We've got a, a piece of A5 paper. You've got a Bic. You've got a HB, a 2B, and a half mil fine liner. And to make matters even more difficult for you, I'm going to be giving you some quick fire general knowledge questions. And I'm going to give you three minutes to draw, draw, draw a new school bike. Three, two, one, go. Okay. What colour are the seats in the House of Commons? Red. What colour is found on 75% of the world's flags? Blue. Which film was the first to be recognised as part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Uh, Iron Man. What is the name of Wendy's dog in Peter Pan? Wendy's dog in Peter Pan? Yeah. The name? No, oh, How are we getting on? Fucking <laughs> shit, pass. Okay. What year was Heinz established? Who? Heinz. Oh, the beans. The beans, yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know, 1953. No, okay. What year did Elvis die? 1953. <laughs> uh, which seaside is home to the longest pier in the UK? Shit. I don't know. Oh. Uh, Brighton. Okay, the song How Far I'll Go features in which Disney film? I'll go. How are we getting on with the bike over there? You got two minutes left. No, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. New school. <laughs> um, shit. Um, what? Uh, <laughs> what was the question? The song "How Far I'll Go" features oh, in which Disney film? No, oh, it's uh, enchanted. Okay. Is that even a fucking Disney <laughs> film. <laughs> what is Queen Elizabeth's second surname? Oh no, sorry, no. Queen Elizabeth II's surname. <laughs> Queen Elizabeth II's. Queen Elizabeth II's. She's got two surnames, apparently. Ah, uh, Dorothy. Which new, <laughs> which new British military force was established in 1918? New British? Yeah. SAS. In which English seaside town was Faulty Towers set? Oh, I know this. Shit. Wait. Oh, I love Faulty Towers. Um, how lot of time I got? Uh, you're on one minute 15. <laughs> what the fuck I'm doing? Uh... Which what? seaside town was Faulty Tower? Faulty Tower set. Seaside town was Faulty Tower set. Yeah. Um, Torquay. Who discovered penicillin? One minute left. Uh, John Penicillin. <laughs> <laughs> what is Keir Starmer's constituency? What's his constituency? Yeah. Labour. <laughs> <laughs> How many times has Katie Price been married? Um, Seventeen. <laughs> what is the name of Boris Johnson's newborn son? Tossa. <laughs> <laughs> what is the most spoken language in the world? Oh, Mandarin. Uh, in tennis, what piece of fruit is found at the top of the men's Wimbledon trophy? Thirty oh, seconds left. Thirty seconds. Fuck! I wasn't even drawing a bike. I was drawing a man on it. Um, <laughs> what? Uh, 
code away. No! Oh, oh no. What, in tennis, what piece of fruit is found at the top of the men's Wimbledon Apple. trophy? Uh, in the film The Lion King, what kind of animal is Timon? 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 Yeah. Timon? Timon, Timon, something like that. Oh, fucking, what kind of animal is he? Yeah. It's, oh, Timon. Timon. Oh, <laughs> Timon? <laughs> I've never seen him. Five seconds. Oh, four, oh, three, two, one. There we go. Time is up. Put your I pen down. Do that, man. <laughs> I can't do that. How did it go? Shift. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm just drawing. Oh, I put more time into this big lip guy with eyes coming out. So, like, the only other thing I've got left to ask um, can you leave a subject matter <laughs> and a style for the drawing challenge for the next guest? I want an Art Nouveau duffel bag. <laughs> <laughs> Fun, you toss. Any particular brag or? <laughs> I oh, love it. Man, it can be whatever brand you want. I don't love care. It. But it's got to have two handles and a shoulder strap. <laughs> it's been brilliant. Yeah, sweet. And I look forward to catching up with you later on in the year. You too. Safe, man. brother. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks for listening. I hope you've enjoyed the podcast this week. Don't forget to hit the bell icon and the follow button wherever you listen to your podcasts. And don't forget to head over to YouTube and hit that subscribe button as well. Really helps the podcast grow. And thank you so much for all the support so far. I'm Alex Lloyd, and this is a 21st Century Tattoo. Thanks for listening. Uh, yeah, I do, I do need your mic. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll make sure it's all on camera. It's all good. <laughs> oh, shit.